I'm going to get started. Um, thank you all for for joining me. I will start off now with a with a quick um, with a quick uh, saying. And uncertainty can be more stressful than clear negative feedback, and that's going to be the the um, the the feature going forward in terms of an enterprise project management performance and uh, project management application. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you for the next 15 minutes is, is something that we're really, really um, um, excited about in terms of EPBM applications. And um, one of the major things behind an EPBM solution is to, to really distress situations by providing good visibility across the organization. But let me, let me get through it and then we will get to that shortly. My name is Charles Wright. I manage the African operations for Milestone. Um, we have offices here in Johannesburg, South Africa. We have offices in London, and we have offices in Aberdeen in the UK. Well, depending on how long that remains, but it's not for me to talk about. Milestone is a is a a a, a, um, a private company here in South Africa. Uh, also, um, as the group within in London, UK, and, and Aberdeen, we focus primarily around the sales and design support and training of Oracle Primavera. We also provide a number of alternate solutions um, from other vendors such as Dell Tech, Innate, Synchro, Collabro, Project Tracker, etc. etc. So we, we provide um, solutions primarily focused at Oracle Primavera and one of them is I'm going to show you today. And for that reason um, it's important to let you know that we are a Oracle Platinum partner. It's the highest partnership available. And probably more appropriate, we've been a, a Primavera partner for the last 22 years now. So over the, over the many years, we, we've, we've uh, learned to adapt and we've learned to, to really implement and keep our customers happy by uh, implementing well, um, providing um, services and, and, and products around Primavera and uh, moving with the times as Oracle's progressed from 1983 until it is today, 33 years later. So I'm going to set the situ situation here. And I ask if, you, if you've ever come across these, um, these situations where you ask yourself, why are my projects always late? Um, you know, what is happening that I've missed out or we as an organization have missed out? It's always ending up with projects being late, whether we, we didn't plan it with enough uh, information to really predict the end date, or was it something that we're not aware of, an external um, factor? You know, who should really be doing work on my projects? Do I have an organizational view of the resources and assets available to do work on my projects? Um, who has the latest issue and risk register? So a, a, a list of, of, of risks that could happen happen, and the potential impact on my project, plus the already influencing factors that are affecting my project. Who's got the latest register of them? And if we have a team or a project that is supported by multiple teams, you know, where is it sitting now? Do we have a central place where they are updated, managed, and... Uh, um, um, assigned ownership and resolutions to is it a spreadsheet that we share around or e email where is that sitting now and if you if you go back a few years where uh, before PP, no, sorry PM solutions project management solutions uh, started operating you know they had uh, ERPs the CRMs your financial accounting packages etc cetera, etc cetera, and they were very transactional focused there's nothing really future orientated and, and the problem with that you know the impact of a bad question is that once the money's spent well there's nothing you can do about it so we, we came up with a, there was a, a demand for PM solutions that could plan and be future orientated looking towards the future and what we're going to spend into the future and PM solutions became PPM solutions where we had not one project but multiple projects and we can manage them as a portfolio and now today we have EPBM solutions which allow multiple people to update multiple projects at the same time. Where And our, our, our ERP solution, which is asset-driven, which it defines its structure according to the assets with intent of capitalizing against those assets, do not 
really provide or make provision for future orientated process type planning and where are you doing that right now is the question you have to build another PowerPoint on another project update only to have to do it again next week and this is very much time consuming to the organization particularly when you're in the pharmaceutical uh, sector and you've got uh, demands from a sh small team uh, instead of thousands of of resources like you would on for example for example a construction project and there's a lot of demand on you to provide these reports to your external stakeholders or internal stakeholders and it takes a lot of time and uh, and then with that how are you going to manage all these tasks and how are you going to communicate them to the team over and above just simple reports you know and the more you want to communicate the more reports you have to do and that really takes even more time and we don't have a central place for ideas now actually takes it one step back so what we're used to traditionally is a system where you have activities you have a number of project management tools like Gantt charts and resources and you off you go and you plan it and then you execute it but where do you get the ideas for the project from where are the streaming influences coming through into your organization for uh, improvement projects or new product development or um, um, perhaps just a simple IT project that you need to run where are these ideas coming from are you relying on the executives to to define which projects are need to be done or do you have a system to to have these ideas coming uh, and monitoring these ideas and managing them and the good old one I'm waiting feedback on on and a lot of people will say well I'm not waiting on feedback I'm chasing feedback or whatever words they're using this is quite often that we're waiting feedback from someone who doesn't know that they're waiting feedback from you and without a system to manage this you know it all comes down to word of mouth or emails and if you don't have a system um, this can become quite uh, quite mixed up you know what are my actual resources actually doing and there's a fantastic uh, uh, webinar on Oracle's website on the Instantis uh, um, website that comes from Genco and they really benefited from Instantis by answering the question uh, what are my resources doing and uh, I believe it was entitled you know what are my resources doing uh, they're working on what and they managed to answer the questions always you know what are the resources we're doing exactly every day um, and uh, it really helped them everyone always busy or not um, what strategic objective does this contribute to and a lot of PM solutions will have an activity table WBS Gantt charts CPM you'll have your uh, critical paths your PERT etc etc but do we ever know what strategic objectives this is uh, contributing to what is the executive order the strategy coming from from uh, uh, executive management um, and how is it contributing to those strategies do you have a system currently now that answers that um, paperwork uh, is, is a, another big um, time consumer on projects um, where you have to I don't know um, say for instance create a purchase order someone has to sign it and they have to scan it and then they have to send it back and get that uh, um, that document signed and they then again have to sign it and scan it and email off and by the time you're finished half the rainforest is gone so do you have a system now that uses business processes and workflows to get something from an idea right through to uh, um, realization and reduces the the, the document uh, um, requirement within your organization at the end of it with all these questions you find out end up asking yourself why did you do this project in the first place and without a space to 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 um, jot down the ideas behind the project the the, the charter the strategy that is trying to accomplish we soon end up losing faith and we soon end up uh, um, asking ourselves why, what's the why bother and um, without a system in place to constantly remind you and constantly engage the team this sometimes becomes a, a, a reality so what I'm going to talk to you about is Instantis Enterprise Track, Enterprise Project Portfolio Management Application. I'm going to teach and I'm going to uh, um, show you some of the benefits that you can 
uh, a gain by implementing instantis into your organization, specifically for the pharmaceutical healthcare uh, sciences in South Africa. So, so focusing on, on, on pharmaceuticals, um, the, the market for, for, um, for health pharmaceutical uh, uh, in South Africa, according to the Farm 2020 outlook from PwC, suggests that the, that the market will be around one, or just below 1.8 trillion in 2011, with a year-on-year -year increase of seven or just short of 8%. And if this continuous growth trend uh, um, um, goes through until 2020, you could be looking at a $1.6 trillion market. Same way, if you look at it in terms of people, in the same report, uh, PwC suggested that in 2020 there was an estimated 6.9 billion people in, in the world and to grow to 7.6 billion. And as you have more people, so people will become sick and so will you need uh, um, medication to support this requirement. If we look at more from an IT point of view, um, Bench, uh, Rock Health, they, they supply um, a resource and the funding and support to entrepreneurs to try and bridge the gap between pharmaceuticals and uh, uh, technology. And they suggested in their recent study that the venture funding for digital health, or IT, the Internet of Things, was way beyond $4 billion in 2014, which was almost um, as much as the three years prior to that. The RDC, which is another U.S. company, um, and it assists health businesses by making better IT decisions. They did some, some studies, and they believe that Oracle, the Oracle Health Science Applications, is the number one provider for the life science industry. And 15 of the top pharma, uh, pharmaceutical companies are using um, Oracle Health Sciences, and six of the top 10 biotechs. And what we were trying to do is to try and expand on this by offering another Oracle product now and this time to help you manage your projects within those those organizations. So as you develop new drugs, as you improve them, as you build facilities, as you include IT, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you could use Instantis Enterprise Track as your EPBM solution to manage these items which are as projects. Coming closer to home, Deloitte in their uh, um, 2015 Life Sciences Outlook for South Africa believes obviously that you know, South Africa is the largest industry, uh, 3.9 billion in 2013, and is expected to grow by another 6% um, over the, the next few years to 2018 to 5.1 billion. So that number is really exponential, and it's getting very, you know, and these, these drugs that are being manufactured need to be managed as projects that go through a, a project life cycle, um, and um, the, the Oracle Instantis Enterprise Track um, suite of application is designed to help you do just that. So let's talk a little bit about what Stantis is. So if I can just give a few key sample and key, uh, key points. It's a cloud-based or on-premise application. So unlike other applications where you are either given a choice of a desktop or a server software solution or a, a cloud so, so service as a software uh, um, SaaS operation, here you have both options available to you. So whether you run an already um, big Oracle oper operation for your ERPs, and et cetera, et cetera, you can expand it with another on-premise application for pure project management. Or if you don't want to get involved in that, you can just simply put it on the cloud, um, which improves and uh, um, it's quicker to deploy, et cetera, et cetera. It's very importantly uh, built to include the full life cycle. So while you're planning and selecting, and that's very, very important, you know, we can't just go and select projects which best suit us or the, the loudest person in the organization. We've got to base it on the, the uh, um, evalu evaluation of proposals and ideas and then select the best of those which are going to give us the biggest ROI. And within a stance, it allows you to do that whole life cycle. So from the very first idea and to uh, the, the realization of the benefit. And a lot of applications out there will stop allowing you to update uh, projects once they become terminate. So once a project has been marked as complete or on hold or um, uh, 
you know, cancelled, whatever, that's when the the, the uh, KPIs stop. But with Instantis, you're allowed to monitor and update the metrics of the project even after it becomes a terminal. And that's a very, very important fact. It focuses around strategy, ideas, execution, resource, capacity, and reporting. And those are the main flavors of the organ of the op of the the modules within Instantis. And I'll show you a, a better graphic towards that um, in the next slide. It is completely web-based and mobile-enabled. So there will be a, a, a drastic reduction in, in IT spend where your IT uh, shared services don't have to run around and update applications on, on end-user machines and update whenever a new version comes out or something like that. They just need an a email or a, sorry, an internet-based uh, um, device and they can access it anywhere, anytime. And there's also mobile apps for Android and Apple. It is a secure uh, application. Um, it can it supports LDAP. It supports SSO, um, and uh, you can be rest assured that the data that you put in there is uh, uh, managed at a very granular level. So you can choose, you know, not only what people can do, what they can see, but what people can do with what what they can see, and the, the level of granularity with the security options is is, is quite uh, um, infinite. It's uh, divided into two processes, so there's a number of processes that are available through it and are uh, um, adapted into solution modules such as the dashboard, such as the knowledge base, such as the, um, the um, ad hoc reporting, etc., etc. And then throughout the application, you, you can, um, you have, it has its own social media, it integrates with your mail exchange, has notifications, and it breaks into those three parts of processes, solution modules, and collaboration portals. And there's no need for customization. So there's, there won't be, unless you are, are you doing some custom integration to an already um, rolled out application such as EBS, there's no need for customization, customization of it in Stantis, only configuration, which is a, you know, it's, a, it's been a, a really a, um, key feature that we believe that we can send functional consultants to perform functional work and configure the system functionally, rather than having to rely on a, tr a translation from the functional crews to the developers to develop the application the way you want. In this case, it's 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 configurations, and in fact, when you deploy the solution for the very first time, you deploy it in install mode, and then you hand it over to the functional crew, and they then go and uh, switch it over to uh, configure mode. And it has a UAT mode and a production mode, and every time it's done, it, 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 it changes itself dynamically to suit its requirements. So while it's in, for instance, uh, user acceptance UAT mode, um, the data that you create within UAT mode gets dumped when it goes into production mode because that data was just there to test the environment and test the business processes and test the functionality. So it's, it's quite dynamic in that way too. Carrying on, in Stantis, let's talk a little, a little about the, the history. And it, it started out in uh, just before 2000 in the US. And that's quite important. It's been, to date, focused mostly around or, or and around uh, um, the, the Northern America territory. It had a number of customers in, in the manufacturing, healthcare, and services uh, around uh, new product development, process improvement, Lean Six Sigma, and RTPBM projects. Some of the customers um, base that they had was, you know, quite diverse, um, and you can see mainly within the the U.S. territories. Then, in 2012, Oracle acquired the assets of Instantis, and that's a very important uh, point for Milestone. Uh, let me explain why. As I suggested, Instantis started out in the U.S. and focusing around the, the Northern American territories and building up a, a large customer base there. And in 2012, Oracle acquired Instantis. And as Oracle is a global uh, organization, Milestone was very quick to jump on this and try and offer the same benefits that Instantis offered to its uh, US customers here in South Africa. And we can configure it with our own time, 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 um, time zones, our own rates and currencies, you can configure all that so it can work here and just as well as done it done in the US 
uh, and particularly for uh, uh, um, projects where you have a, a, a lower um, a team team usage, if I can put it that way, um, a more experienced team or more qualified team membership. If I can put it to you in a different way, if you take it, for instance, uh, construction sites who manage large quantities of, of skilled labor in a short period of time and thus have a large quantity of, of, of um, um, team members on the project, something like Oracle Primavera P6 was probably the best application to use there. And Milestone has been implementing that for a while now. But within Stantis, it opened new opportunities for, for Milestone, and we would like to do to provide the same level of services and support that Instantis provided to the US here in South Africa as well. So we're very excited about it, and uh, hopefully this will start a, a, a little bit of an interest into the application here in South Africa. The benefits, if you're in the business development, and if it take you back to my um, my first statement quote that I made in the beginning, it leads to visibility, and that's very important for organizations. If you're making decisions every day, uh, particularly around projects, you need to be basing them based on on, um, on informed decisions. And to do that, you need the visibility across the organization. And in Stantis, as an enterprise project portfolio management application, where you have multiple stakeholders that can engage with the solution across projects and programs and portfolios, it's designed to give you that visibility. It's easy to use, own, and afford, and I'll explain that in the next slide why. It's a complete life cycle solution, so we're commonly used to the applications with an activity table, WBS, uh, GAN chart with a number of activities and dependencies and logics into them. But this is the entire life cycle. So the very first idea that pops in your head um, on your way to work in the morning, to be completed and benefits realized at the end of the, the, the project and even after the project is completed, all the benefits can be monitored in the solution. It allows us to call, to, to, to uh, allow our, our, our strategy, our um, executive wants in the organization can then be translated into project execution through activities and project charters and tasks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it has its own strategy module that allows us to, um, to, to manage the strategy and append projects where there's a comp percentage contribution to these strategies. And it's a very important module within the application. Um, for those who, who, who subscribe to something like PMBOK, there are a number of project management tools, the GAN chart, the PERDS, the um, duration analysis, all of those commonly understood project management tools are available as one would expect in any project management tool that are available in Stantis Enterprise Track. Um, and for those who have used standard desktop project management tools, you would plan a project, you would create the WBS, you come up with the activities, and then you would create labor assignments to them. But with an enterprise application, you're taking resources from a standard enterprise library. Because companies don't hire resources normally, I would say, for a specific project and the decommission at the end of the project. Usually, and not always, resources are hired to work with multiple initiatives. And thus, within Standards Enterprise Track, you have a standard single library of resources that you can manage the capabilities, their capacity, their certifications, their details, and assign those to the projects that are executed within your organization. A very, very useful um, tool, uh, and I see it uh, having a lot of impact with the here in South Africa, is that to date a lot of organizations have been managing projects with a lot of common office applications. For example, Microsoft. And with uh, Instantis, it, does, it, it uh, uses a different approach to some, where a OEM would define a package that uses its own reporting platform or another OEM would define an operational package and then define a reporting package so that you don't bulk down that operational application with reporting queries. So there's different ways you can do it. But Instantis went down the middle and said, right, we'll have an operational application and we'll use existing Office applications as our reporting platform. 
and it integrates with Microsoft Office, for example, and I feel it's a quite a useful tool. And increases collaboration at the workspace. So, you know, you're relying on, on meetings, expensive meetings with lots of salaries around the table. You're relying on, on confusing emails and you're relying on, on um, memos, etc., etc. But with a, a central place where everyone can get together, have complete visibility across the project, and then start to collaborate is vital. We can share ideas, we can share uh, um, best possible plans, we can share um, options, etc., etc., and that's very important. So it integrates with your email, it has its own social media within the application, and I'll show you some of that uh, later on. And then, therefore, it builds on consistent, reliable data to support these decisions. And by that, what I mean is that you know you don't have multiple versions of a project on some file on some someone's computer out there in the business place. You have a central place, a central library of, of knowledge and management that gets built over time and helps us to, to, to support decisions going forward, helps us to build templates to be reused on future projects, etc. And therefore, the, the return on investment you're going to get from projects by implementing an application, an EPBM application, is, uh, it, you know, you, you can almost uh, um, consider it a, a, a write-off, um, the, the, the purchase of the LFP Enterprise Track, a write-off in terms of the ROI that you could uh, um, realize, making you work better, not harder. All right, easy to own, easy to afford, easy to use. Uh, before I, sorry, I apologize for that. Um, it is believed to be the only multi-initiative application in the market today. And by that I mean a lot of applications you could go and say this project belongs to X initiative and this project belongs to Y initiative, for example. However, when we say a true multi-initiative application, I can create an initiative, let's call it new product development, that uses Lean Six Sigma, that uses you know, that uses uh, uh, these types of templates and naming conventions, etc. And then you have IT projects, for example, and they, uh, um, they're, they're a completely different breed of people, and they talk in different terminology, and they have different templates and naming conventions and drop-downs, and you can actually manage each individual uh, um, initiative on its own with its own naming convention, its own templates, its own uh, uh, selections, its own processes all contributing to a single strategy, and that's very, very important. Right. Um, if I had to take the application and break it down into smaller parts in terms of its modules, it would look something like this. So we have the Strategy and Applications Manager, which defines the, the, the corporate strategy into a taxonomy of children and, and parent relationships, so we can break down that strategy, which then uh, is our, our our language to the projects to to uh, turn those around into executions or tasks, and we can contribute to these, these strategy nodes if you want. And that's around the planning of, of, of projects within your organization. Now, I did, now that we move on to selecting, so in order to select the right project, we need to bring in a bucket of ideas. And a stance allows you to create ideas into the system and then take them through a process of getting those ideas approved into a proposal or a project charter or um, uh, um, a project request um, and it's, and it's a, in its own shell. And then you're going to go along and update a number of other um, details within that request, such as what's the impact on the business, what strategy is it going to contribute to, who's going to do the work in general, and you can define and customize per initiative what information must be captured in order for us to make an informed decision on which projects to select. And then we can look at our mobilization plan in terms of capacity, whether it be a human resource or equipment or our ability to deliver. We can do what-if scenarios. And once we've done that, we can then go and say, right, this proposal is approved, and then we execute it. Project managers assigned, we define the WBS, and all the common project management tools are implied. Whilst this is all happening, because it's all in a central environment, there's a knowledge manager, a function in within Instantis, that allows us to save all this information, so next time when we build a project charter, for example, we don't have to create it from scratch, 
we can pull from the template and you can just do a simple search and we don't spend time building stuff that's already been built before reinventing the world and with business analysts some of them you know they can create some really wonderful wrong stuff rather we're just being very straight down the line within the business analysis this is what we want to know this is what you need to do and this is the, uh, the end result and by using templates we can almost channel them into to 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 perform their work the way that it needs to be done to, to meet the organization requirements and with thereafter there's the measurement and it has its own financial manager we, we, we can manage both benefits and expenses not just expenses we can measure the metrics so whatever you KPI you want to measure against your project even after the project becomes terminate you can uh, um, assign that to your project and then update those which can contribute to a specific strategy and or strategies it's supported by dashboards and reports so dashboard your interactive reporting and reports ad hoc or standard published reporting and at the bottom there you see the enterprise stream it has its own uh, um, um, let's call it Twitter but it's not a Twitter online Twitter it's a internal instanter stream so whenever someone creates a project or creates an idea everyone can see it at the top of their screen and they can contribute to the idea they can subscribe to the idea they can make suggestions to those ideas and it's a it's an online internal your organization Twitter account if you want so I said early on, one of the benefits from Instances was that it's easy. So it's easy to deploy. Um, you don't have to customize anything. It uses an Oracle database. It uses standard middleware. Um, and then it's a chance of it's a, it's a case of, of configuration, not customization. You know how what sort of drop downs do you want? What initiatives do you want in your organization? What sort of uh, team members or certifications do they assign themselves to? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera and we configure that so it's, it's fairly easy to deploy and easy to use um, it's as I said it's web based uh, it's available anywhere um, the the modules navigating around it is very uh, very simple um, it integrates with with, um, with Microsoft Office and therefore you, you'll find that the the, the um, buy into the application is quite easy there too and it's easy to afford I didn't say it was cheap to afford. I said it was easy to afford. So, um, with the with 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 Instantis, it being a cloud SaaS or online uh, or or server um, um, option, you can have it quickly deployed in the cloud, or you can go with a more uh, um, a more uh, structured approach within your own organization, de deploying your own server hardware. Um, firewalls, databases, middleware, etc, etc. You can choose the way that you want to, to implement it and it all depends on your, your organizational preference. If I was to take the application and break it down into its parts, it would look something like this. And I'm not going to say it is going to look like this, but in order to, to give you that visualization, we, we've, at Milestone we've taken the application and put it into these boxes. And we, it's designed in a way that shows you how a project or a product would start and move through the different modules in order to end at its benefits. And I'm going to start with uh, strategy management. And let's, let's go into that. So this is an example of a, of a basic strategy. And um, with that. Yeah. The strategy manager module of Instantis enables your, your organization to articulate an, a, a sort of a hierarchy of strategic objectives for one, programs and products, and releases to define a component product of portfolios. And with that structure then you can then define the taxonomy and then have uh, a, your, your projects or your products contribute to those strategies and you can monitor it from a strategic level only, which I'm sure executive management has been looking for for, for a while now. And this top-down perspective, uh, it offers a, a critical element in terms of that visibility that I was talking about right from the beginning. And uh, uh, the same alignment management capability can be used to define and manage a portfolio of applications. Um, so now we can take it one step down as well. 
Moving on, let's talk about ideas. When I finish with ideas, we're going to also move on to project requests. Now, in Stantis, there are two different objects, but there are a workflow that moves from one end of idea through proposal into the project. Now, as I was suggesting earlier, we are probably used to something such as um, as this, a table of activities with a Gantt chart on, on the right, and we manage activities from planning right through to completion of the project. But in Stantis, we've taken, it's been taken a little bit further. So we scrap this idea and we look at the idea. Now this is a workflow as it is, comes directly from the Stantis documentation on how an idea moves through to proposal. So ideas created through through the system as from an from an e-track user, Instantis track user, or we can publish this onto your website and users can capture ideas without having to log into the system and it gets pushed into the idea portal. We assign an owner and we do a number of, of, of custom uh, um, selections so we can decide what information should the idea user put into the, the, the idea in order for it to us to, to make a informed decision of whether or not to accept or reject the proposal. Once it becomes a pros proposal, the next step looks a little something like this. So the proposal is going to go through a number of iterations and you can monitor those variances and iterations in order to complete the proposal to a point where we can make a, a informed decision as to whether this should become a project yes or no. So if we join the two here, the proposal in Stantis, then once you accept the idea, it automatically becomes a proposal, and then we're going to start deciding whether who's going to, who's going to be working on the project, how we're going to evaluate this proposal, what is going to benefit the, the, the organization, and other, other information which we can custom add onto it in order to get to the point where we can say this should become a project for whatever reason. From then on, does it become a list of activities and can charts. The idea portal looks something like this. Um, so you, you, you can create ideas and you manage those ideas and it becomes like a, a table and allows us to, to uh, look collectively over the ideas and start to decide which ones we're going to select. Captures are, uh, captured ideas are tracked from, from the concep conception of the product launch and they encompass to identify and reward creative contribution and innovators to these ideas. Moving on, we're going to talk about program management. So in addition to, to Instantis ideas and projects, we now can group projects into programs and break them into more small pieces. So as you would break up a project into WBSs, you can break uh, projects into programs, um, however they, they, your organization currently manages them. Next, we're going to look at the alignment module. So with the mobilization of projects, we can look at, before execution, our capacity to deliver those projects. So we look at what kind of roles are required on the project and what do we have available in order to deliver it. We cannot do a project if we don't have enough resources to perform the work. And Genco was one of the uh, um, companies that really benefited from this when they said, what are you busy with? And the answer was, I'm busy on something. And the question, therefore, was on what? And this application tells you what they were, were busy on and how much effort. So the capacity manager, we can do what if scenarios and we can, um, we can uh, look at our ability to deliver the project um, before we actually uh, execute them. In terms of project plans, and this is the normal project tools and techniques that you have. So project WBSs, the roadmaps, you know, project managers can view and update their project schedules made up of, of, of uh, WBSs and tasks. We can assign tasks for approval. So you can have, for example, the end of the project, the very last task on the project cannot be marked complete until there's an approval. And you can choose who that approval is. Just some of the, the, the options available within the, the application. And then um, you can then go and use the other tools such as critical paths and scheduling and purge and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Um, but probably one of the useful features that you're going to find if we if you do take on Instantis is that it's, it's very strong integration to Microsoft projects. And a lot of the organizations out there today are managing their projects with a desktop version of of Microsoft projects. And they they you know they can manage tasks, they've got resources and et cetera, et cetera. And the way it works in Instantis is that you would create the project in Instantis first. So it'll be an idea, a proposal, and then it'll be acceptance of project. And then, for example, you can export your project shell to MSP. Define the activities, define the structures, define the links and the dates and durations, etc. Whilst the project has been exported from Instantis, it marks the project in Instantis to read only. And nobody can add anything or change anything on the schedule of the activity whilst it's out, out on updates in Microsoft projects. Once the person who exported using the project manager from has exported the project from Microsoft projects, they can then uh, um, bring it back in and switch it back into uh, edit mode. And this is very, very useful. And it, it leverages, leverages a lot of uh, existing um, functionality for Microsoft projects. And you might find that at the beginning of implementation, a lot of the users will want to use this. And to avoid alienating them, we, they can continue using with Microsoft project and slowly make the transition from Microsoft project into Oracle Instantis. Whilst the project is in execution, you can leverage a lot of functionality from the enterprise team or our social uh, uh, media within Instantis, if you like. So as projects are created, as a new resource is hired within the, in the uh, application, as someone sits, submits a new idea, it automatically pops us up as a tweet, if you want, within Instantis. And now we can start to contribute and make suggestions and collaborate around those uh, um, entries and events and a very useful feature within Instantis. The next one is uh, uh, financial and non-financial metrics. We talk about metric management. So the management of uh, financial costs, the management of financial benefits within the organization, and non-financial, such as, let's take, for example, you know, there was there's some of their defects or, you know, lost time injury percentages or, um, number of, or, of um, you know, uh, marketing materials created. It doesn't have to be a physical product. It can be IT as well. So you can manage and, and, and monitor the financial and non-financial metrics even after a project has become terminated. Uh, in terms of, of, of reporting, you can have uh, um, reporting for a particular role. And... Um, you know, the, the reporting um, for at a project manager's level, we find on the project management page. You can have all your information at the project level there about dates, durations, efforts, percentages, complete statuses, departments, uh, categorization, etc. And then you can start to have dashboards where your 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 portfolio managers, your your, your executives can get answers to specific questions they need, such as the contribution of of costs such as the contribution of, of, of uh, um, uh, metrics against their strategies and then you can look at uh, uh, dashboards that they can start to manage by exception and the dashboards within Instantis are not just simply pages within Instantis they are interactive so we can manage by exception click on the bad players and start to do root cause analysis around those objects whichever has been selected and as I suggested earlier on, the integration with Microsoft Office, so it actually uses Microsoft as its BR layer. And therefore, you know, uh, I presume that, that uh, there's a lot of uh, a really good um, um, team members out there who have used Microsoft Office and they've got really good at it in order to, to um, translate data into information through various reports. But now what we can do now is we can continue that 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 uh, uh, fashion for reporting. But the data originates from a single source. It originates from Instantis. And you can actually build a report in Excel, save it as a template into Instantis, and then you run it. So you build the graphic on how it should be shown. But the data itself gets pre-populated by Instantis through showing by using a feed report we call it in Instantis. And if I have time, 
I'll try and show you one of those today. PowerPoint summary reports, I'm not going to be able to show it today, and this is fantastic. So in that last minute, you know, when you, when you, before you walk into a meeting, you've completely forgot about generating a report. Um, or you've spent the whole day or the whole two days coming up with a PowerPoint to, to show the performance of your projects to your, your stakeholders, and it takes time to build that. What if you could upload a template into Instantis and then run it just before you walk into the meeting, and it'll pull all the latest data from your project? And that's exactly what it does here. We import uh, uh, templates into Instantis PowerPoint templates, and we run them, and then you can choose what sections of the templates you want to report on, whether it's the team members, whether it's the project schedule, whether it's the issues and the risks, or, or the project charter. You can have all that information ready for you. Uh, what if we've talked about? We've talked about the projects now. We've talked about the activities, planning, and now we move into execution. So we've planned those those projects, and now we can execution execute them. You, know, you can have multiple people supporting you in terms of updating your project within Instantis. You can look at uh, um, using timesheets, so your staff members or team members who are contributing to the project, they can update timesheets and have its own timesheet module. And then we can look at an organizational level. We looked at what ifs at the beginning of a project in order to define, can we do, do we have enough to complete this project? But now the organization at an organization level, or portfolio level, or, or a strategy level, we can look at our, our, our projects and define and see if we are delivering, if there is any performance against those, the, those uh, any performance concerns against our, our teams. And in addition to that, we can manage and update our entire team of resources, both human and equipment, and we can manage their certifications, we can manage their, their uh, uh, areas of expertise, so whether we're planning projects or we're swapping resources, and that happens quite often, where a particular resource, that being human, might not be available for whatever reason, we can quickly select uh, um, alternates based on their ability to deliver whatever the requirement is and that could be, for instance, an a area of expertise. You need a development or you need a, a, a database administrator. You can quickly find another database administrator if yours leaves the project. And then you can look at utilization. So, for instance, you know, if somebody's only working one hour a day on your project, so only plan to work one hour a day on your project, we can look at uh, um, uh, moving these resources around and look at the, the, the planning, or the capacity planning around your project in order to best optimize the uh, project utilization. Finances, and I've suggested that you can manage both benefit and expense, and probably most importantly, we can upload financial templates from Excel spreadsheets. So basically, the way it works is that the um, administrator will, will upload a financial template that you built in Excel, so your benefits, your expenses and the taxonomy and the structures below that. And then when you create your project, at the point in which you approve a proposal into a project, you are you have to decide on selecting a particular financial template. And then that is the way you can manage both top-down and bottom-up. So if it's timesheets against the rate, which defines your, your expenses, or whether you're doing it at a top-down uh, top level as general expenses against the project, you can manage both ways. And with the latest re uh, release of of um, um, uh, Stantis 16, and you can start to uh, define templates at proposal level already. Okay, financial metrics now, following on, we can now track both the, the, the actual benefits and the actual expenses, and we can track the actual uh, uh, metrics in terms of defects, or we can uh, track them in terms of the um, indicators and the indexes, etc., etc. The schedule management, we track, we make changes, we baseline our schedules, we, we, we monitor the dates, are we delivering on time, what are the action plans, There's, you can put pre proactive uh, uh, reminders into the system and, and, and help you uh, um, monitor the, the schedule. Um, it has a, a, what we call a non-WBS activity, um, so you can track issues, 
risks. You can track changes. You can have a change management module within a project. You can have a risk management module, and you can create and have a, a, a qualitative risk management plan within your, your, your projects if required. Document management, so you can upload documents into a file system on, on Instantis, or you can um, save links into the system. And then in addition to that, once you upload a document, you can then select a document to be a best practice, which then contributes to your knowledge management. Reporting, as I suggested, you have standard reports built in. You can build your own reports for presentation purposes. You have ad hoc reports to answer specific questions at any time. You can add templates and you can implement and you can integrate with Microsoft, Project, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. And then finally, the dashboards. Dashboards for a particular person, for a particular group, for a particular project. You can have as many dashboards as you want. And there's almost almost 40 different types of objects that you can put on each dashboard. And then you can start to change the X and Y axis and develop a, a dashboard that best suits what you're trying to portray. The social stream, as it is suggested, um, where you can have uh, um, people contributing and adding their, uh, their, their little bits and pieces to ideas or projects being created and you can integrate it with a mobile device and you're more than welcome to go onto your app store today and download Instantis uh, Enterprise Track onto your mobile device. Knowledge management is suggested as projects are up as documents are updated you make the best practice and you and you start to build on your knowledge management and therefore reduce the turnaround times from projects being uh, um, created to being implemented because all the documents and the knowledges and the, the templates are being created and you just simply update those. And the final one is survey management and this is a brand new thing uh, uh, I believe in uh, EPBM solutions where you can send out uh, surveys to uh, members within the team or externally and get their feedback through an email uh, feed, uh, forwards and backwards by bi-directional you send out an email with a number of questions and, and, and you prompt them with responses to see, you know, get feedback, where did you go wrong, what was, their, what was their feedback in terms of performance of the project and the benefits that they got. Very, very useful uh, uh, module within Instantis. And then I suggest that even if the project becomes t uh, terminate, you can monitor the benefits thereon. So let's see it in action. Uh, I have five minutes left, so I'll have to be very quick. So this is what it looks like. This is the version 15. There's a later release that's just come out, so you can put your logo here and you log into the system. As I am running out of time, um, please do submit an email to us. Send us an email. Let us know if there's anything more specific you want to see. Um, but I'm just going to shoot through here quickly. So ideas. So an idea, you can create an idea. You can define what information you want to see in those ideas. So for instance, I want to implement Instantis, which would be strange because this is, is Instantis. But assuming you want to, you can then define what information must be in that. You can guide your users through the idea process by giving these help hints and explaining to them what how they should answer each particular value within there, how they should score, what strategy does it contribute to. And um, moving on to project requests. As I submitted that idea later on, um, you can see, and I've just opened up my email here, it says thank you very much for your submission of your idea. Um, and it will be accepted or rejected, for example. So it just shows you that type of notifications and 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 your um, that integration with your 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 Exchange server. As I'm running short of time, I'm not going to be able to show you everything. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on. show you the dashboards here. So for example, it's not just a page. If I take this project here, content management, let's look at the execution phase. If I click on it, I now can look at the project and start to manage by exception and see, right, initiate, plan, design, and execute 
these are the statuses, this is the information, this is based on information, and I can start to manage thereon. And whilst we are building projects and whilst we are uh, creating reports and creating ideas, we're building towards our own work, for example. And rather than going through the entire application or go through all your 40 million emails that you've got over the last uh, uh, two weeks, we can look now and just focus on the information that we need to update. So for example, I need to approve or reject this particular project. Someone has assigned me to approve this. Or someone has assigned my uh, uh, resource called Any Anchors to a particular project for the entire project, I need to approve yes or no. So now I, I've got that, that uh, mixed matrix or, or functional matrix if you want, that approval process now, if someone wants to use something from my team, they have to approve it. And creating pro progress reports. How long does it take you to create a progress report every week? Well, now what we can do is we can, on a project, we can define what is the reporting cycle, and we click on Create Project. Now, for the project cycles every week, what Instances is asking me to do is not to go and create the report, but wherever the value is, for example, benefits, $242,000, uh, initial forecast for Simenu, why was the amount so low? I just got to give it a reason. I got to give it a reason why the scope is in a red status. The schedule is in a red status and the scope is in the yellow stages. I just got to define here. I don't have to go and build the report, but my reports, my ad hoc reports and my published reports will now use the information that I've published here as the project manager on those reports. So now we have reasons behind why the values are there or, uh, are the way they are. It's a very, very useful uh, feature. And it goes on for timesheets for activities that I'm assigned to, uh, I can look at my ideas, I can look at my project requests. So very, very useful. Unfortunately, I have run out of time on that. Before I do, if you are in South Africa, anywhere in the Gauteng area, um, we'd love to see you on Friday. We are having a one-on-one -on -one session for the pharmaceutical sector. It doesn't have to be for the pharmaceutical. If you, if you think this would be useful in your organization, you're not in pharmaceutical, please do come ahead, uh, along. Register for the, for the event. When you register for the event, we'll give you a phone call and uh, give you a, a time slot. And we'll have a one-on-one -on -one so we can listen to what are your needs, we can listen to what do you need uh, um, for, uh, for your, um, your, uh, your organization and how best we can implement it. And I think it'll be a very useful feature where you can have that one-on-one -on -one at time. Unfortunately, I have run out of time for today. Um, I'm just looking now. I don't see any questions. Okay. Thank you all very much for, for taking the time to listen to me. It's been an absolute honor to do so. I wish you all the best and hopefully hear from you soon. Thank you very much. Good day.